At the present stage, we have still not concluded that there is a genocide. As of now, we do not have sufficient available evidence to meet the legal qualifications in the genocide. And there must also be um, a, a necessity to uh, destroy a certain group. And such destruction must be physical or biological according to the Convention. When it happens in conditions that can be qualified as inhumane, as many of the cases that we have investigated and merited, we argue that these are also war crimes. Codified as an offense in the Ukrainian criminal code, uh, so that would be a matter that would be taken up within the domestic uh, legal system. Hello and welcome to Ukraine Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Centre and NGO ULN to Course. And I'm your host, Matt Wickham. In today's episode, we will speak about the press conference on the conclusions of the UN's commission on the crimes of the Russian Federation. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and don't forget to press subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Eric Mosey, Chair Commissioners of the United Nations Independent International Commission on Inquiry of Ukraine, tells how in the report spanning 170 pages, there's a chapter addressing accountability issues, outlining various initiatives aimed at ensuring accountability and the establishment of a legitimate tribunal in the future. Let's listen. This conference room paper, uh, which I just mentioned, and which is an extensive document amounting to about 170 pages, uh, contains one chapter on accountability issues. And there we describe all the various initiatives taken at the national and international level to ensure accountability. And as regards the international level, we mentioned the various possibilities there, including, of course, the ICC, which is already in existence and active. But then there are these plans about the tribunal concerning aggression, the crime of aggression. Here we give an overview of the discussion until today. As you know, the discussion has been going on for over a year, and it's not yet clarified. Uh, we mention some of the main factors that we think should be taken into account. Um, a very important issue is to ensure that such a tribunal, if established, must, ha must have the necessary legitimacy. And this is both with respect to its competition, composition, and with respect to its functioning. And it's also important if there is general agreement of, with respect to establishing such a tribunal. The next question from a journalist pertains to the committee's findings regarding genocide. The journalist refers to a statement made in March where the commission indicated that they haven't yet uncovered any evidence of genocide in Ukraine. She inquires whether there have been any significant changes in their stance since then. This question is of great interest not only to Ukraine, but also to the broader global community that values freedom and human rights. Let's listen. At the present stage, we have still not concluded that there is a genocide in Rwanda. Let me say that we are perfectly aware of the uh, concerns and allegations concerning that crime. Um, we are therefore uh, uh, investigating this step by step. Um, as of now, we do not have sufficient available evidence to meet the legal qualifications in the Genocide Convention. You will recall that it is a matter of intent and it's also of the perpetrators and there must also be um, a, a necessity to uh, destroy a certain group and such destruction must be physical or biological according to the convention. Now, these are strict uh, uh, conditions, um, and this is confirmed by case law. Um, this said, we will, of course, continue our investigations. As mentioned previously, we have noted, for instance, that there have been uh, certain statements uh, in Russian 
media which could uh, perhaps be relevant to the issue of incitement to genocide. This is one line we are following and we will look at this. But so far there are no conclusions. We will just say that we are continuing our investigations and there may also be other issues that we will do, uh, con uh, pursue. But let me say, this issue should not be considered uh, in isolation from our, our other findings. Uh, as you will know, we have found a large number of war crimes. That's a serious crime. We have found th that at least with respect to two uh, topics, namely torture and um, attacks uh, in connection with the waves uh, against Ukraine since October 2022. On these two matters, the issue is whether there, it should be considered as crimes against humanity. That is an offense which is even uh, stricter in order to apply. And we have indicated that there are indications that this may be, this may amount to, um, to, uh, to crimes against humanity. So I think it's useful to see this in context, and then the com Commission will continue its work. The Commission has uncovered evidence of war crimes, particularly in cases where action displayed extreme inhumanity. They emphasise the importance of bringing those responsible for unlawful confinement to justice. Despite limited access to occupied territories, the Commission has managed to interview victims who have suffered from such confinement all of which is detailed in their report. Do such cases uh, uh, qualify as uh, war crimes in uh, whether or not the international organs should react to such cases? And what should be their response in such cases? Both uh, the reports uh, to the Human Rights Council and to the General Assembly, we talk about uh, unlawful confinement. And we talk about this uh, extensively, talking about it not just as a violation of international humanitarian law, but when it happens in conditions that can be qualified as inhumane, as many of the cases that we have investigated and merited, we argued that these are also war crimes. And uh, because uh, the mandate asks us to give recommendations about uh, accountability, and we have interpreted this broadly, we reiterate that those responsible for the unlawful, inhumane confinement should be brought to, to justice and that the victims should also receive uh, uh, the services that they deserve. So this is certainly a topic that we have paid attention to. Now, as regards uh, cases in uh, the temporarily occupied uh, territories, we unfortunately have had uh, no access but we have been able to interview victims that were present and that were the subject of such confinement. And therefore, we have information about the situations that you are talking about, and we mentioned them in the report. Next, the commissioner discusses how they've offered recommendations on holding perpetrators accountable and ensuring justice is served. Let's listen. We have a series of recommendations for different uh, stakeholders. The Russian Federation, the Ukrainian government, the international community, etc. And we also have recommendations to be implemented in different uh, time frames, in the short term, in the medium term, and in uh, the long term. It will take too long to go through the whole set of uh, recommendations, but just uh, let me say that uh, uh, being faithful to our, the mandate that we received uh, from the Council, we make recommendations on uh, criminal accountability how to bring to justice perpetrators of the violations uh, that we have found. But we have also adopted a broad notion of accountability that uh, takes into account uh, the victim's rights and needs 
and therefore we also make recommendations about uh, reparations for victims, about truth-telling, and to some extent about uh, guarantees of non-recurrence, measures to avoid uh, the repetition of uh, the violations. And this is uh, part of the contents of the uh, report. So um, we certainly do this. To finish off the committee's report conference, we have the Commissioner of the United Nations Independent International Commission of Inquiry on Ukraine, Veranda Grover. We are, uh, the Commission is investigating into the various facets of the destruction uh, of the dam and its impact on life in Ukraine. Uh, the crime of ecocide, as we understand, is uh, codified as an offense in the Ukrainian criminal code. Uh, so that would be a matter that would be taken up within the domestic uh, legal system. The commission is looking and examining as per its mandate more as to what are the crimes being committed under international human rights law and international humanitarian law. So while we are examining uh, the impact and the destruction of the dam, uh, the specific crime relating to ecocide would fall within the domain of the Ukrainian domestic legal system. You've been watching the special project by Ukraine Media Center and your Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in flames. In the description under this video, you can find more information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraine.